All right, so you've seen the thumbnail, you've seen the title, and this is breaking news. It broke yesterday. We're going to be talking about the zero deposit mortgage, which will be available for first time buyers. This is a really big thing because I speak to a lot of first time buyers who are struggling to get their deposit. In this video, I'm going to go through all the things that we know so far. We don't know everything at this point in time, but I'll cover what we do know. I'm also going to offer you maybe some thoughts um, as a qualified mortgage advisor around maybe some of the things to bear in mind and questions to ask if this is something that appeals to you and something that actually you would use to get on the property ladder. I will share my screen. I will also be using my iPad to illustrate some drawings because I think some fundamental information here is going to be important. But if you do find value in this, please make sure that you share this so other people get to see it just like yourself. And don't forget to drop a like or a comment as well. That would be amazing. Right, I'm going to share my screen. This is an article from The Evening Standard who broke this uh, yesterday. I'm not going to read the first paragraph because it's kind of a little bit redundant, but I'm going to start on the second paragraph uh, right here. So it says, there is potentially some light at the end of the tunnel. Neo Lender, Opportunity has announced a zero deposit mortgage product intended to help those who can't raise the 5% deposit on which many mortgage providers insist as a minimum. The, the company plans to offer the zero deposit scheme as part of its existing offering, which helps customers access the finance they need to get on the property ladder via a mortgage booster loan. We will talk about the mortgage booster loan in a moment. This loan is paid back on an interest only basis and the capital amount does not have to be repaid until the buyer finally sells their property, hopefully for a profit. Now, I will link that article in the uh, comment section. I'll pin it down in the comment section. So if you want to go and read this full thing, by all means, go and do so. Actually, I encourage you to because there are some pros and cons, which they cover in here, but I'm going to cover in this video as well. So um, I think it's really important to kind of get an understanding of how mortgages work and how the mortgage booster loan element to this is also going to work so that you have a kind of a fundamental idea of what is actually happening here from a, a product point of view. Now, I'm just going to get my whiteboard up here. So bear with me just one second. I'll set this up and I'm going to illustrate this so you've got a visual kind of cue uh, for this as well. So let me just arrange this properly. Right. So typically when you purchase a mortgage, so let's just say, well, purchase a house. So this is a house. <clears throat> I know that's a really poor, poor drawing. This could be drawn by a, a two-year-old and I'm sure they'll do a better job than me. But for this purposes of this video, we're just going to keep it very, very simple. Okay. Very high level. Now let's just say the value of this property is a hundred pounds and you wanted to buy this on the market. Currently, what you would do is you would make an offer, and based on the value of the house, you will be required to put a deposit in. So 5% would be £5,000, and 10% would be £10,000, okay? Now, what this basically means is that you have equity day one in that property, because on your mortgage, you're only borrowing £90,000. So, oh, where did that go? Uh, so, essentially, you have... 10% equity in the property right now. Now that is designed to protect you and it's also designed to protect the mortgage lender. This is all about risk. And as you know, or may not know, the more deposit you have, the better your interest rates are when it comes to the actual mortgage and your mortgage repayments. We got onto all of this in a moment because there, there are bigger questions to be asked here. And like I said, we don't know all of the information just yet, but I'm sure more will come to light like, in the next couple of days in coming weeks. So this is how it traditionally works. Now, my understanding of what they're proposing is you would have a mortgage booster loan for the equivalent amount required for a deposit on the house. So let's just say it's £10,000, right? This will be interest only. So you'll be paying interest on that £10,000 over the course of the lifetime of your mortgage. Now, the question is, what is the interest rate here? I mean, especially now where we've got high interest rates, well, interest rates increasing, mortgage rates have doubled in the last five to six months. What is this rate going to be? It's going to be interest only, which is great. But how do you pay back or can you pay back this £10,000 in installments? Or do you have to make a payment in one chunk? Now, if you've used or know anyone who's used the help to buy scheme, the help to buy scheme work like this. You would have £10,000 that you might have borrowed assistance from the government, that would be interest-free for five years. 
Now, after the five year period ends, you couldn't make monthly installments to pay that back this 10,000 pounds. You had to pay it back in either two chunks or one chunk, right? So it meant you had to save to pay back this amount. At this point in time with Opportunity, we don't know how this is going to work in terms of repayment. You don't have to repay it until you sell the property, but that leads on to another question. Under the help to buy scheme, if you borrow 10,000 pounds, like I've said in this example right here, and your property value when you sell it grew by 50%, you would have to pay back your 10,000 pounds plus a 50% premium as well as a reward for the government giving you that. We don't know whether or not Opportunity is going to have a similar element with this mortgage booster loan. So that's definitely a really, really big question to ask when it comes to this. You know, what are the logistics? How does this actually work? Now, there are some key considerations, which for me, I am really, really keen to make sure that we, let me just get rid of this, um, that we cover. And these are my main thoughts and considerations when it comes to this announcement. What happens if the property market falls? Now, this is a really, really important question because many people will say that, you know, you can never get into a territory where you're going to have negative equities ever again. It did happen back in 2007 and 2008, back when you could do self-certified mortgages. And what that meant back in those days was you could be earning 25,000 pounds and say you owe you earned 50,000 pounds and still get a mortgage it takes us back to those days and i have a friend personally whose family did a self certified mortgage they couldn't really afford the property but they were desperate to get on the property ladder when 2007 2008 happened they found themselves in negative equity so what happens when the property market falls now as i've already explained in this graph right here let me just bring it back up again um, in this graph right here, let me just organize this again. Um, you automatically day one have some equity in your property under traditional mortgage setups because you're borrowing an amount minus your deposit. With this, you're not going to have that. So if the property value falls, then it, what does that actually mean? At the moment, I don't know because the detail isn't out there. It's definitely something that needs to be asked if this is something that you're potentially going to be looking at as an option as a first time buyer. The second consideration is this one. Will their own evaluations or valuations of the properties affect applications? So let's just say, for example, you found a property that's uh, on the market for 300,000 pounds. You negotiate with the owner and the owner says, okay, you know what, I'll accept 290,000 pounds, right? So that's your mortgage application going in for 290,000 pounds, right? So if all of their data tells them that this 300,000 pounds house that's on the market that you've negotiated down to 290 is only worth 250,000 pounds, what then happens? Does that mean you've got to go back and renegotiate things? Does that impact your application? How does that actually work? We don't know this just yet. Now, the fact that they built this, this database or this system internally is a good thing. It's designed to help to protect them from a risk point of view. It's also designed to protect you as a potential customer because you're going to owe this money, obviously, and hopefully it helps you not pay over the odds. But that's a really, really big question mark at this point in time. So that's consideration number two. Consideration number three, interest only. I mean, is this good or bad? Like I've already said, you know, we've seen interest rate rises um, for five months of the last six here in the UK. Some mortgage rates have actually doubled. We think, or at least the Bank of England is signposting there are going to be maybe two additional rate hikes by the end of the year to try and curb inflation. So what does that actually mean in terms of the interest rates that are going to be available for this? Now, again, please do remember, these mortgage companies are, it's all about managing risk, okay? So if you have a really um, high loan to value on your property, i.e. you have very little deposit that you put in to give yourself that cushion from day one, the interest rates are a lot more expensive than if you had a 50% deposit on a property. From a bank's point of view or a lender's point of view, there's not much risk. They've got a 50% deposit, they're in the game with you at 50% risk. So therefore they're gonna offer you better rates on the mortgage. What are the interest rates going to be on the interest only part of this and also on the mortgage element to it as well? If interest rates are going up, 
it means that potentially you're going to be paying more. And that leads really to my consideration and thought for number four, you know, you really do need to think about your affordability for this. This is good news for a lot of first time buyers. It's going to help a lot of people, but you have to really consider, can you really afford this? You need to sit down and try and work out right. The interest only part, if you take the mortgage loan booster is going to cost you this per month interest only, but what is the rate on the actual main mortgage? All right. And you need to also think about that, you know, if you are going into this and you don't fix for maybe two, five, or, you know, even maybe even longer than that, maybe 10, 15 years, because you have those mortgages available right now, what happens if your rate increases midterm, right? So let's just say you take out a two-year fixed rate mortgage. And at the end of the two-year fixed rate mortgage, let's just assume you're on two and a half percent, for example, but at the end of that initial term, interest rates were at 4% you have to consider the affordability and think worst case scenario. And, you know, they're talking about changing the affordability criteria and all that kind of stuff. Now that's a separate conversation and a separate video. I think it will be a good thing, but it could also be a, a really, really bad thing because it potentially gives people the ability to overextend and borrow money that they can't really afford. So this is really, really good news. However, there are lots and lots of questions still to ask. Um, if you go over to the Proportunity website right now, they are currently taking um, interest. So you can actually register your interest uh, for this if you go here. 0% deposit is up there in the right uh, hand corner of the website. And you can actually register your interest for this. But like I said, there are still lots and lots of questions to be asked about this right now. It is going to be good news. The other thing that is worthwhile bearing in mind is that, you know, even with property prices as they are currently, look, we're potentially heading towards a recession, but it doesn't feel as though the property market is slowing down. What does this do to potentially push property prices even further? Someone has coined a, a really interesting phrase, greedflation, right? Um, and that is people know that, you know, people are desperate for a commodity they put up their prices anyway because there's more, more demand and fewer supply. And this is the exact equation that we have with the housing uh, market at the moment. There are too few homes on the market to satisfy the demand. So with this being launched, and if homeowners are quite savvy and keep up with developments like this, they could say, you know what, that house that I was going to put on for 300, I'm going to put it on for maybe 325 see what happens because they know that there'll be more people who will be using a service or a product like this to get on the property ladder. That's just an equation potentially. But those are my thoughts. If you did like this, uh, please do drop a comment and a like. And like I said, if you did find it useful, please share as well. I appreciate you. Have a good weekend. I will see you on Tuesday.